Kaya. Mm-hmm. Don't I, I believe you have an intro to do? Yeah, I, I oh, think of you're, course, yeah. you, you're in Never summer ending. school right now, young man. You've got you to get those <laughs> grades up. There it sucks because I've always been great in school. Well, at least in college. I never had to go to summer school or anything like that. And now I'm having to make up for intros. Uh, Eddie. Now, these boys, they decided I have to do the next 50-something intros, which is literally <laughs> Holy year. Holy shit. <laughs> because apparently That's after so slacking much. in that department, some, some dick went through our podcast and did the math, <laughs> called me out. I'm just waiting for the day somebody does the tally on the advertising reads, and I'm gonna end up like having to read two years worth of ads and shilling <laughs> my That's soul out. My least favorite part about our podcast is doing the intros because it's just I don't know. I, it's the one thing that you can fuck up immediately. So don't do that. That's the worst <laughs> thing to tell you immediately. Right? There. Oh, thank you. No pressure. Yeah. No, it is terrible because you always want to give the guest a nice intro, but you don't always know everything about them, and you don't want to yep. come across like, ah, uh, you know, here he is. This guy. Yeah, don't worry. You can you can insult the sh disrespect me as much as you want. I will not mind. I, you know I might even like it. Oh, I know you won't, but your fans will. That's the problem. Is always the guests fans will shit on you like you. How dare you? But okay, you know what, everybody? Here's Eddie Burbeck, and today we have lots of fun topics. Just some of which we'll have to come up with. <laughs> Starting with, hey Eddie, how about for the people at home who don't know who you are, why don't you give a rundown on what you do? Um, exactly. I make comedy commentary videos. That's my main channel stuff. Um, I guess YouTuber, I should mention that first. Uh, but uh, I also have a podcast. Wait, is it? Am I allowed to mention another podcast on your podcast? Fucking, is that bad? Well, no, you, you're more than to, welcome to, to but it, it. Might be, uh, it might go down in flames now that it's been mentioned on this show. <laughs> yeah. Shit. We have a bit of All a right. reputation for uh, sinking other battleships in our waters. Well, that's mine. Or that's fine. Our, ours can go down. Most recently, we canceled Daredevil, so <laughs> tread lightly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we. Uh, I also am part of a podcast called the Gus and Eddie Podcast with my friend Gus Johnson, who's also a YouTuber. And you know, that's that's my main shit mainly. So that's all I got. Nice. Uh, two YouTubers. I don't like your kind around here, but maybe I'll <laughs> warm up to you. Hopefully, I'll win you over. Yeah, you gotta win him over by the end of the episode. It's your, it's your friendly challenge. <laughs> I'm up to it. Oh, it's wait. only, if it was a video podcast, maybe I could, you know, like swing my dick around or do some sexy moves for you, but I got only audio here to work off of. <laughs> if it was in person, all you'd have to do is pour Kai a drink and you'd be in his good graces for life. <laughs> I have a beer right here. If I could hand it to you over the audio, I would. Oh, oh man. Okay. He'd kiss you on the some. lips right then and there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all have our little... Little gimmicks, Eddie, as you might have noticed. Kaius is he's a raging alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, Kaius is a crippling <laughs> disease. It's a great bit. That's a great gimmick. <laughs> Andrew likes his hentai and his furrydom. Jackson just likes making noise. I don't actually Oh and spending money, I guess. He likes spending money on things that make noise and that's his entire entertainment. Yeah. And Charlie likes RuneScape. What is your <laughs> drug of choice? Um, well, I guess the the thing I go back to always is showing off my knees. That's kind of what I'm known for. Your it's knees? My what? big, my big, beautiful knees. It's, um, just a dumb fucking meme that I started with my channel a while back, but it's like every tweet response I get now. Oh, wonderful. Does that annoy you? Is it like that obsessive thing where fans no, just cause... constantly send you knees? I I intentionally did it, so I can't be mad at all. Like I I, I made a sketch, um, kind of right before I think it was the video before, uh, my channel first started gaining traction, and it was a sketch about me like making my own documentary about how I have the best knees in the world, but um, everyone thinking it's stupid, and it's clearly just me trying to make people think that because I'm really insecure about them. Uh, so then I would like tweet about it all the time and now I make jokes about it occasionally too. So it's, I, I started the, the monster of it and I have to deal with it all the time now. That's kind of how I felt with board burgers. Once it reached like <laughs> Hollywood stardom and I was getting paparazzi knocking down my door to tell the joke, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Maybe I did go too far. The, I'm the Frankenstein to this monster here. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing much you can do. Cause the thing is, it's nice to see people. You know, being a part of the joke, but when it's like everything you fucking hear. Uh, but I also make the joke all the time, too, because I'm lazy. I'm lazy on Twitter, and that's why. So that's, I guess, my drug of choice is talking about my own knees. Well, I, I can respect that to a certain degree. I don't know if I'd be <laughs> so eager to keep bringing up board burgers, but all power to you, man. 
Wait, so let me wrap my head around this. You started this whole knee thing because you're insecure about your own knees. It's a bit, is that I was insecure. I'm not actually insecure yeah, about sure. my knees. No, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah okay. uh-huh. So you're insecure about your knees, but then you got everyone to send photos of their knees. Wouldn't that make you feel even more insecure? They, well, hold on, hold on. like knees all the time. Yeah, what I if didn't you get saw people like... to send pictures of their knees. I'm not Dan Schneider feeding everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just mainly joke about my own. <laughs> I want to just mm. clarify that I'm not having people... DM me pictures on their knees all the time. But oh. how would you feel now if, like, That's some message I some ag- Adonis mm-hmm. man showed up with, like, the perfect knees? Wouldn't you feel a little embarrassed? Like, oh, I'm trying to show everyone mine are great, but his are clearly the, the best. S- the situation you're talking about right now is me walking in front of a mirror. I want you to know that. <laughs> so that's all I'll answer on that hypothetical. Fair enough. How do you watch porn? Like, the rest of us are just jealous of the porn star's cocks, but... Do you just stare at or their what? knees? Just staring at their knees. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Do you spend all of watching the video thinking about that? Is that the only thing? No, but like the whole yeah. unrealistic body image. How are real men supposed to keep up with this? And do you just oh, stare at their that's, knees? That's how I assume people watch my videos. Got other guys watching the videos <laughs> and feel inadequate about it. Look at them knees. You see, you just... I've already done it. I've complained about myself doing it, and I've already mm. done it again. Oh, yeah. No, we, we are just... We do these jokes about ourselves, but then if somebody tweets it at us, we get mad. I was like, if somebody's going to tweet some furry porn at Andrew and he's going to get pissed off even though we're asking for it. <laughs> oh, Kai, speaking of, just... has anybody been messaging you guys with shit porn? Yeah, no, a, a, hand, a handful of people have. Yeah, but they, okay, they you, Kaya, you, you haven't really instigated a movement, though, because every time they do, they're like, oh, by the way, Kaya said you wanted this. They're just doing your lazy <laughs> work, your grunt work for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's part of the, yeah, I mean, I know I haven't been printing posters and pan cards and. Give some context. Protesting at Capitol Hill. I was trying to figure it out so badly. I don't um, know what's happening. <laughs> we were talking, I don't know why we were talking about shit in our bonus episode the last bonus and i posted a gif of someone who dips his hand in like a porta potty toilet fishes out a bunch of shit and then he takes a dump but the dump is like all nasty looking because there's cum in it and then he mixes it all up (laughs) in a frothy mixture and he puts it in a trash bag and he puts the trash bag over his head and he enjoys this, I suppose. But yeah. it was a funny the gift. He gives a big double thumbs I wish up I... and smile at the camera at the end. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I in listening to some episodes, I was prepped for you know like this kind of talk, but I wasn't prepped to be this shocked immediately. This is probably the worst I've heard of it of the episodes I've listened to. You guys <laughs> is that detailed bit. Oh my well, god! I, mean, I think because it's real, it's not just joking about it. The fact that you're, yeah. I'm having to picture that guy now. Well, you don't what have is that picture. noise? Kaya's got, Kaya's got that image. Yeah, but you, you can't like, you, have it. He can you're send a it to you right now if you'd like to join. If, if you really oh, want, oh. Eddie, that's fine. Yeah, I, uh, okay, stop asking Jesus, Eddie. There, <laughs> I'll just put <laughs> it in general <laughs> with all the hype. No, Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it I again. See, I see. Well, I see the image link there. One sec. I think there's there's a door open right behind me, and I think there's a sump pump going, and it sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's very loud, no. and I don't know what's happening. Kaya so that's not good. We can't, we can't hear it. So Kaya, for yeah. context, just posted this this animation in our chat where we have all of our previous guests. Oh, no, and now fuck. I, think, I opened uh, it. I saw it. Don't, yeah. don't open it. I, th- I think we're going to lose all of our contacts now. No one is going to want to come yeah, back on holy this Yeah, holy shit. Because nobody, I saw nobody had said something since like the 19th. And now, <laughs> you know, like a little over a week later, that's the first thing that's said in the chat. I just want nothing but <laughs> user left messages in the log from start to finish oh, of God. everyone filing out. This isn't the worst. I mean, we've been posting so many photos. There's been photos of diseased dead children and photos of Hitler smiling. I don't think our <laughs> guests are going to be very surprised. <laughs> yeah, the horrible photo of Hitler smiling. Brought, well, yeah, but it was like eight it photos. Photo. It was like eight photos in a row, all of which were trying to make Hitler look good. It was like a positive gallery of, <laughs> oh, well, he wasn't that bad. Look at him. He- I don't want to go down as the podcast that was trying to make Hitler look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I don't remember why we posted photos of Hitler looking dabber and debonair. You know, it's just messenger stuff. Well, the point, we, the point is we don't endorse it. We don't like it. <laughs> just want to get that out there. Damn right, Kaya, you, 
You brought up uh, looking at cocks and getting envious in porn. <laughs> I actually had a very, I had a super similar experience recently. You guys know about that game that came out called Scum, right? Oh, the like prison one. Yeah. Scum. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the survival game, but you're, yeah, right. Okay. It's called yeah, Skunk. In the, in the game, uh, all of the men are so well hung. I saw a clip of a man <laughs> peeing. And he was fuck? grabbing his dick with both hands and still had like six inches of free space left. And it was completely <laughs> flat. Free space toward the body That's... or toward the tip? Both. He still had like at least <laughs> three inches. Wait, he's like ball dancing on himself? That's fucking yeah, massive. He... If he only put one hand on it, it would have looked like just a small band-aid wrapped around it. If with two hands, it was still insane. He still had like three inches towards the tip, three inches but towards the base. Why? why does a video game have that? I don't know to make us feel bad, Imagine. make gamer, make gamers even more insecure. Like, is this what a dick <laughs> is supposed to look like? So, God. is this some kind of futuristic prison where they send every well endowed man? To- <laughs> That's their punishment. <laughs> That's their Damn crime. right, like it should be. Yeah. Make the street <laughs> just. Their crime I want to compete is with huge small dick, small dick men only. <laughs> It was who... genuinely unholy. It made porn star penises look small in comparison. Like, it was completely flaccid and dangling, <laughs> and it was nearly down to the player model's knees. Well, is it is it oh, pixelated? Shit. No, it's not pixelated. It's, it's a full-blown full, it's a full wait, blown you penis. Just, this is a game where you can just watch people take a piss? Yeah. You, can do that all, you can do that in, like, any survival game. Rust was you can do that in real you life. Don't, you don't see a fully modeled dick in most games. I know, you well, it's rest. it's part of, like, an integral thing. Like, there's also this article that I was going to try and find the, the GIF for you. Might as well add to the collection in there. Uh, but when I typed it in, there's apparently a rampant bug. Scum bug causing uncontrollable penis growth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Even so just apparent- scum bug sounds like it doesn't yeah. belong. <laughs> yeah. Scum bug sounds like a porn site for weird people. Yeah, but apparently there's like a a glitch in the game that's causing all of the male penises to continuously grow. <laughs> How many are there? It's the best. How many I've penises ever heard. are there? Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's. This is actually the one of the few, I guess the few instances where I know of a video game modeling a cock. Uh, I'm not sure, but every player uh, has one. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of dicks in the game. Apparently, like here. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna. It's a YouTube video, but. You can find a bunch. Like, I, w- I just clicked on the article. There's a lot of cases where you can see the penis just continuously growing as it flops around. It's wild. Does it eventually but, take over the whole map and that becomes the island? I would hope so. I'm sure they're probably going to solve this epidemic at some point, but for now it's unpatched and uncircumcised. Hmm. Wait, yeah. is it uncircumcised? Can you conver- Like, how detailed is this model? I mean, it's not bad. Huh. I just yeah. find it weird that they wouldn't have... Something steam or whatever wouldn't be all like you can't just show dicks. Did Rust not have dicks? I thought Rust. I yeah, never it did. Rust. That's what I was oh. saying. It did have dicks, and there was another one. I'm sure. Well, Ark of Ark you... Survival Evolved. Wasn't better. Rust well, pixelated though? Where when you get naked, Conan it would be... exiled. No, no, no? really. No. That oh. was a setting. You could change the setting. For oh. the love of God, Kai, stop fucking posting this scat porn in the chat. I'm deleting it. <laughs> <every single time. laughs> post it. I saw it appear again. I was wondering. I'm posting it, and also, Charlie, you're lying. I looked up scum, and this is what I found, and that is not a big penis. That is tiny. No, that Jesus, Kaya, that's not. That's before the enhancements. It's a stat. It's a oh. stat you can up. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's a penis. Do you have to slider? level up for it. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a penis stat. That's How do you level that's it up? Ingenious. Do you fuck people no, or that, do you that, combat people? That's an ingenious game. A game where literally as your character gets more powerful, his dick gets bigger. And it's literally a big dick contest. That's ingenious. Did I, you type in scum penis to find that picture, Kaya? Yes. And the well, the final to... name is actually scum-penis.jpg, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> but now if you, if you move from images to all, the first link there where it's about causing uncontrollable penis growth, if you scroll mm-hmm. down, there's like a collage of large flopping dogs. Yeah, I found it. Yeah. So are there, are there vaginas in this game? Can you get big old beefy vaginas? I think it's only men. Wow, this game sucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's actually in the game. <laughs> what a dumb feature it's just hanging there wow is it censored until i, I click on it wow no, <laughs> no. further it down the article it is. Well, what the fuck is the, the point article. of this it's cool i'm, I'm down for that I'm <laughs> it, down for it is cool but i don't I, like, why would you program it like that what's the point i'm it's super useless for this 
for for clicks and stuff i would imagine i'm yeah, super relieved that all of you guys also think that they're way too big because for a moment like when i watched <laughs> that clip there were no oh no that's noble yeah, no, that's normal. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's actually yeah, that's a little bit. I can't believe they put me in a video game. Yeah, that's a little smaller than mine, but you Slightly know, so it's cute. Average. It's a cute little penis. Yeah, uh, mm. put a little bow tie on. Yeah, take it to prom. Mm. That's fine. When was the last <laughs> time you guys looked at it and felt disappointed? Every day. Pretty, Pretty much. I don't even have to look video. down, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's speed running disappointment. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, every time he wakes up, he gets out of bed and runs to his mirror and goes, "Time, I'm disappointed. Done." <laughs> I thought it was scum. I thought I could level up. <laughs> the most shameful time for me is when I right when I step out of the shower because I shower cold and mm. it's just embarrassing. Oh, it, it goes away, see. doesn't Little it? Pain it goes up, away. Yeah. yeah, it shrivels like up. You know what I hate, Kaya? I was I was just thinking about that. Like everyone hates shrinkage, but the thing that I hate is when your balls get impossibly shrinkaged and it's like they feel like this rough fucking desert landscape texture like they're not even like skin anymore they don't move you know what i'm talking about the ball sack yeah it retracts I hate it. as well it, it weirds it me out like i packed. hate i hate feeling that i feel like my they're just gone yeah that's your instincts telling you oh my god my penis is small right now i hate this <laughs> this is bad hide <laughs> seek refuge in a bush don't come out until you're warm. <laughs> is that why I always go and hide in a bush before I sleep with a girl? Yeah. Is that I was the reason? Say, that's, that's one of our primal instincts. You need food. <laughs> you need shelter. You need to not be seen when your dick is small. That's it. Just to coax me out of the bush with berries and then we can have sex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, it might not have to be berries to get me out of the bush. Maybe a nice big old thing of honey would do the trick. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say so, Andrew? I would say so, because honey is a Ooh. delicious snack food. But more importantly, honey <laughs> is a free shopping tool that automatically saves you money by searching the internet for the best promo codes whenever you shop online. I'm talking Amazon. I'm talking eBay. I'm talking J. Crew, Walmart, Sephora, Expedia, more, and honey... All over the internet on these big websites has already saved 10 million members money. So it's a big thing. We're not we're not peddling this this tiny little untrustworthy man who's saying, hey, I got promo codes out of the back of his van. No. This is a legitimate large member style business that has over a hundred thousand five star reviews on the Google Chrome store. There's no reason to not add honey to your browser today, especially during the holidays. When you're shopping and spending the most money you do all year, probably. You can get it for free at Jackson Filament. Joinhoney.com slash official. You can get it free at joinhoney.com slash official. It's the easiest way to save money online, so go check them out. Eddie, what do you think of Honey? I love Honey, actually. Not only have I worked with them, but they saved me a ton of money on my TV when I moved Perfect. over the summer. An actual so you can track it on that... That drop list thing where you can put it on your drop list and it's like, hey, tell me when this thing's $200 cheaper. And then they email you and then you can buy it right away. That's the fucking Eddie Burback, everybody. <laughs> Endorsing Damn it. right. Thank you, honey. And now back to small wieners. We don't have to stay on wieners, Andrew. Yeah, we really that was don't. all I had for... That's all <laughs> yeah. I had from... I did, however, look up how the bug was caused. Uh, every time you logged in with a, a naked character, your penis would grow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish real life so I really, was like that. I really wish I had known that. I would have downloaded the game and just kept logging in and out as quickly as I could and then just eventually have like this coiled snake of a penis. I hope it takes up the whole map. You just drag it along like a fire hose as you're running. Yeah, I wonder if it would drag on the ground or not. I wonder if they programmed that, mm. program that in just in case. Like if it got <laughs> long yeah. enough. A doomsday protocol. Like, we, you know, we are trying to kill someone, and you can just track them by their dick, just moving. You're like, they're about a mile out. <laughs> step on it like a hose. You do that cartoon thing where you step on his dick and he can't piss, but then you step off and he just unleashes on his own face. Is that a cartoon thing? <laughs> yeah, I can't say I've yeah, seen that one. on the hose. Like a fire uh -huh. hose. Oh, with a hose, okay. I was like, I think I missed that Looney Tunes episode. You know, I don't, I don't think anyone in our game is going to have a 15-foot-long cock, but let's program the physics just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Call NVIDIA. We need physics in here. With DirectX 12, you have the most realistic cock-dragging physics you could ask for. And with ray tracing, it looks beautiful. Yeah, ray tracing. <laughs> <laughs> the, game's, oh. the game's pretty innovative. Uh, really? Another thing I saw when I was looking at Scum, uh, they also programmed buttholes 
So if you <laughs> if you walk if you crawl backwards towards the camera, you can see like a really well modeled asshole with like little hairs and cut like gradient and shit. What the fuck? Beautiful. This is game of the year. This is the most innovative game I've ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> what other Todd game Howard is can eat his heart out. Can you take Is a it shit? only men though? What about the vaginas and the boobies? I'm pretty sure it's ew. only male characters. Yeah, none of that. Uh, can you <laughs> yeah, no, ew. Ugh. Oh, apparently, yeah, you apparently you can mm. shit in the game. There yeah, no, I knew you could shit in the game, but uh -oh. I didn't know they had fully modeled buttholes. I'm oh, trying to decide like if it was all of the developers or just like one guy that was kind <laughs> of in charge. <laughs> They're like, what are we going to do today? Model a gun? He's like, no, you, John, are going to model a high quality asshole today. And that's your job. <laughs> He's looking up reference photos and shit. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, I mean, my heart goes out to the people who have to sit down and come up with all the algorithms that recognize penises and boobs and such for back when chat roulette first started chat roulette for all the young people in our audience used to be this webcam service where men would just go on to jack off and women would go on to laugh at them basically but chat roulette at some point put down the gavel and decided to ban everybody jacking off on webcam didn't they which means somebody they make a uh, like an adult they made it yeah version? Yeah, they, they yeah. said, hey, listen, you can't jack off on chat roulette anymore, but there's, like, chat sex roulette or whatever. Go, Just go to our new website and jack off. They, they knew they couldn't stop the invading forces of the cock, horny people, but, like, how do you write that math to recognize a dick? Couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Which is my convenient segue into all of the thoughts being on Suicide Watch because Tumblr is now banning, officially they announced today that they will be banning adult porn, well, all porn, except just live action porn. Apparently the reason they got removed from the, you know, we all heard about it when they were removed from the app store, apparently that was because mm -hmm. they got banned, um, somebody uploaded some kitty porn and then the app store immediately removed Tumblr from its apps, understandably. And now Tumblr is banning all life action porn, by which I mean photos of real humans. And everybody is losing their minds on Twitter, which I sort of enjoyed scrolling down the timeline, reading everybody's minds melting. Everybody thinks Twitter, uh, sorry, Tumblr is over now. Do you think it's over? I mean, it probably is, right? I, I mean, a big I part of Tumblr was porn. A lot. Well, I, I also heard they were banning the majority. artists. I don't know. No, they're not banning anyone. What they're doing, I read their announcements only, which I don't know how accurate it is. They're saying that if you have, if you currently have any porn on your blog, any real life porn on your blog, what Tumblr will do is private those posts and notify you. That's all they're doing right now. But the thing is, everybody's losing their minds about how this is going to be the end of the website. But I don't think that the majority of porn is actually going to get removed because this is from their press release. Uh... Adult content primarily includes photos, videos, or GIFs that show real-life human genitals or female-presenting nipples, and any content including photos, videos, GIFs, and illustrations that depict sex acts. Now, it says illustrations, but then they contradict themselves in a follow-up paragraph. Written content such as erotica, nudity related to political or newsworthy speech, and nudity found in art such as sculptures and illustrations are also stuff that can be freely posted in Tumblr. So they I kind of like contradict them. what they're trying them. to say, though, is art that's not intended. I know this is, doesn't really make sense, but, you know, it's in them trying to draw their lines of, like, art that was made that just maybe features, like, a naked woman and not yeah, yeah, like, directly mean, to be porn. But I think that's a lot of people's careers, statue, right? Yeah, yeah, not only yeah. that, but the, that's a really blurred gray line. It's like, how do I know? I could make a sexual porn thing, but if I shoot it artistically, I could be all like, it's an art piece about the... The beauty of the human body and love and the connection of the soul and it's like but it still shows fucking and people are definitely still gonna jack off to this how do that's you how, where do you draw this line that's how britain used to get around the rules way back when porn was still some i think illegal what they would do is simply shoot porn but market it or package it as an educational movie basically <laughs> so they means. would get around the laws either way but here, I mean, there are no laws here. This is just somebody at Tumblr, some loser is going to be sitting there and going through user reports and deciding whether or not something needs to be banned when it's reported. But I'm just pointing out the 
how they contradict themselves like are illustrations banned or not because this a huge part of tumblr is porn but i think an even bigger part of it is illustrated like furry porn and such so are they going to get banned or no do you think that they're even going to enforce these rules in the future or is it just to cover their own asses so that when child porn is inevitably uploaded to the site again in the future they're covered in a sense I don't know. Could be. Well, with the child porn thing is what many sites do is they have a database of all the... This is going to sound weird, but they have a database of all the child porn which they match against every upload that is put on their website. So if you upload, say, something that is illegal, they can immediately detect that without a human being actually having to look at it. But they don't, know if they don't have the actual child porn photos. They just usually have some sort of a... Like a hash... Uh, representation of that which they match against whatever you just uploaded so it triggers all the alarm bells apparently the last time somebody did that it wasn't triggered it was a new piece of kitty porn and so apple decided to take them down but i want to see where this is going i am actually really interested because i i would believe it if i was tumblr i'd kind of try out new ways to move away from all the porn because right now i feel like most of tumblr's users are just lazy guys like me who go on tumblr and Type in like celebrity booty Tumblr. <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> That's booty. it. I just click on the first result. Scum yeah. penises. I do know that in the in the <laughs> art community, there are a lot of people who, when they just want to do porn, they'll open up a Tumblr and be like, "Hey, this is my porn dump. So come check it out." So that's probably going to take a big hit on people who do art commissions for that and shit. Oh yeah, a lot of people are angry. There's a lot of tweets about people who who are losing, or at least saying that they are losing their Tumblrs with like 60,000 followers, which are these Ouch. Yikes. nude yes. Tumblrs. Wow. I can understand the frustration there if they've played within the rules for the last, I don't know, three yeah. years building their audience. That'd be like if YouTube yeah. just suddenly decided, hey, uh, we're deleting all Eddie Burback channels. Do it. And then That's a smart move by them. <laughs> That'd be really fucked up if YouTube did some sort of policy, like if they came out and said, listen, if you're not good with the advertisers, we're not going to pay you. That'd be really fucked up if they did something yeah. like that. <laughs> that would be yeah. fucked up if YouTube, imagine them changing the algorithms and oh, the creators their getting kids fucked content over. And shit. Yeah. Imagine if they just made a system you, where they were outright banning you, though. I know you I'm making still... I'm making a joke, well, but you're, I, I you're right. Either. Tumblr is definitely going further into the extreme for sure. But listen, we'll we can we can rein them back though. We can we can get them back on our side, and I think I know how to do it. We just have to get them a good night's sleep. Do you guys agree? Agree. Who are of we course. trying to get back on our side? YouTube. Oh, I thought mm. it was Tumblr or Tumblr. E anyone? I think we can. <laughs> I think we can get anyone to come to our side with a good night's sleep. Do you guys agree? <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Yes. All right, yes. then good, because I have the perfect <laughs> way to get them on our side. Lisa mattress. <laughs> is the right mattress for you. It's a product of more than 30 years of experience and mattress engineering with over hundreds of hours of testing. Three foam layers, cooling pressure, body contorting, relief, and support. Over 300,000 happy Lisa sleepers agree that it's the mattress that gives them the rest they need. You can order yours online at lisa.com slash official, L-E-E-S-A, dot com slash official and get up to two hundred thirty five dollars off and free sh free shipping guys i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bullshit you i'm not gonna lie to you i think this is a damn fine mattress real talk i i've used it multiple times myself many one, times right? yeah. i do yeah i got so one charlie. charlie does mm -hmm. as well we have both used them and they are they are from the bottom of my heart too. really high quality mattresses so uh Check it out at Lisa, L E E S A dot com slash Charlie. What's the rest? Official. Oh, you nailed it, dude. Uh, Eddie, do you jerk off? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> do you have any interesting tales from uh, masturbation? I really don't. I thought about this. I really like pretty uneventful for what's happened. I've never been caught. I've never, like, you know what I mean? I'm. It's been pretty vanilla of like bad things happening. One time I had a spider land on my dick. That's oh, the only that's eventful cool. one. One time I had, I grabbed, um, you know, right after I grabbed uh, a toilet paper roll and there was a spider in it and uh, it fell on top of me and that was awful, but that was it. On your dick? That's cute. Yeah. yeah what'd you yeah. do with it? I've never, I've never, I, you know, we made, we went and got dinner. We made plans <laughs> later. Huh. Still friends. 
Are there bug sexuals? I know there's furries and there's scalies. Oh, of course, and very, They get very angry if you confuse the two. Scalies are the ones who are into, like, scaly lizard there's a, animals. Uh, there's a whole subsection of dudes who want to see women get fucked by, like, giant centipedes and millipedes oh. and bugs and beetles and shit. Oh, yeah. I forgot what it's called, but it's got a, it's got a name, like... All the other. It's called love. <laughs> it's called yeah, and the only you bigot. It's called the only true expression of love. Love uh, is love, damn it. But no, it's that's it's, what a bug's life's about, it's, right? Uh, it's a defined. <laughs> yeah, it's a defined fetish. It's got like a name, like all the official ones and shit. Yeah, it's a thing. Are you into that, no. Kaya? No. Are don't. you into I that, don't Eddie? Like bugs. No. You'd think that maybe it would shake that loose when the spider, you know, landed on my penis. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, really. Didn't. You didn't feel like a sexual tingle when that happened? No, like, no, like a no more awakening? Fear. Not like a gasp of like, oh, what's this? Sometimes fear is the source of, of one of those O's, but not in the, that instance, no. I would jump up and just, oh, God, that sounds terrible. Yeah, it was not fun. It's that moment when, when you're in anywhere and you suddenly feel something on your face and you realize you just walked into a spider web. Oh, right? And you go, ah! But on your dick, oh, God. Burn that bathroom down. Run. <laughs> Do any of you other boys have any have any raw encounters with animals? Any any wildlife nature stories? I don't, I don't, I don't like how you put that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I any, you all are. right, let me rephrase it then. Have any of you guys just gone bareback with an animal? <laughs> Jesus oh God. well when you put it like that yeah <laughs> I, I mean do you guys do you guys have any fun animal stories or bug shit or any any tales from uh, the animal kingdom? Like well, sexual? I know you do because no. you told that story about like farting in your dog's mouth. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's one you, of them. What? Did you make your dogs look yeah, your what? ass? What was it? Well, that what? what? To quickly summarize it, I was like nine or ten, and I just started like farting in my dog's face, <laughs> and my dad walked in, and he was like, "I just all he said was, uh, oh, what would you, what would you, how would you feel if she did that to you?'" It <laughs> <laughs> was a powerful learning moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, I never felt more. More ashamed in my life. <laughs> he taught you the I, golden rule right there. Wasn't it bare ass? Farting yeah, I was your pulling down face? my pants and everything and doing Jesus. it. Jesus, yeah. she was just oh sitting my on my God. bed while I was playing games, and every time I had to fart, I'd just get up and fart in her face. <laughs> <laughs> Respect to your dad for making a learning moment oh, out of he, it. I feel like if yeah. I was a dad, my first response would be like. The fuck are you doing, dude? Eddie, if it makes you feel I never any better, in the same room again. If it, this is how you do it. Then you just blow us directly in your son's dog's face. Yeah, and he farts in your face and goes, "How you like it, huh?" But if it makes if it makes you feel any better, Eddie, I have not farted in my dog or any other dog's face ever since. That's good. That makes yeah. me feel yeah, much yeah. better. Yeah. Hey, Eddie, did you know Charlie <laughs> used to sniff his own ass though? I sorry, I didn't hear that. What'd you say? Charlie used to sniff his own ass. Has he told you? I don't think so, no. I don't recall. Huh. He always tells that story at parties. Yeah, I don't think I whispered that one yeah. to him before the podcast. <laughs> hey, remember to record your own audio and also I smell my own asshole. <laughs> Charlie, when he was little, would bend himself into a pretzel to rub yeah. his hand into his ass crack and smell it afterwards. Ugh. And then tell his parents about it. Well, I never told them. Well, no, I didn't tell my parents about it. There's nothing to brag about there. That'd that would be weird, to, guys, if you yeah. told his parents. Well, on the upside, they know now. <laughs> yeah, that that brings me to a question for you, though, Eddie. Did you have any, like, weird experiences, uh, not experiences, but habits as a kid? Because mine was, like, kind of a habit. I'd do it pretty often. Uh, I found out, uh, I, I was too young for it, but I kind of had, like, a temper when I was a kid that went away when I was around, like, 10. But apparently, when I was a dumbass baby, I would get mad about things and just, like, bump my head against the wall like not hard <laughs> but i just like kind of clench my teeth and just like hit my own dumb fucking head against the wall and that's all i did i guess some weird quirk stuff but yeah like can you imagine just seeing an infant just not hard but just <laughs> sitting in a corner against a wall just bumping his head constantly you'd think that i wouldn't be able to speak when i was an adult but you know i'm here that's like some exorcism shit i'd be taking yeah. into the priest <laughs> yeah mm. Do you oh, yeah, remember at all why you did it? Did you feel bad about it? I was too young size? to even remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. I looked down at my scumbug penis, and it was too small. You didn't Ooh. log in and out enough in real life. That's another. <laughs> Video that games just choking always... yourself unconscious, and then your dick gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> what a brilliant strategy. <laughs> <laughs> That's logging in and out in real life. Yeah. I, I wish that worked in real life, where if you go to sleep naked, you wake up with a bigger dick. That would be great. 
No, fuck real that. Life I wish. I, real yeah, life I wish codes. life had like console command or whatever. Yeah, cheat codes. Oh god. But here's no. the thing. Yeah. Here's what you got to remember. Everyone else on Earth will also be using those cheat codes. Not yeah. if I use the cheat. Not if I use the cheat code to turn off their cheats. Shit. Jackson is. solved. The he system. got to it first. We're all <laughs> fucked. Brilliant. Nobody answered the question anymore. Yeah. Oh god damn it! That would be nice though to just change my y but my y variables. <laughs> Your y axis. <laughs> <It's just Yeah. laughs> mm. It doesn't make you taller; it just stretches you out. Yeah, <laughs> you just look really, really gangly and awful. <laughs> You're slender man. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, and the phys the physics aren't aligned for that axis, so your feet clip into the floor. Half <laughs> yeah. of my body isn't textured. <laughs> the developers tied the physics to the frame rate too. Everything's fucked up. Yeah, whenever you take one regular step, you teleport across the room. Might be kind of useful though. Yeah, kinda. I, in a way, you really would be able to control it. If, try try walking one step to just pick up like a, a glass of water. Or yeah, something. if you're yeah, if something's near you, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah, you go to kiss your girlfriend, you clip inside her and kill her. She explodes. <laughs> she blows up. <laughs> that wouldn't be fun. Be the greatest power and the greatest curse simultaneously. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of video games, Andrew. Yeah. I th Did we talk about this, the whole Bethesda drama with the bag? Oh, no, we didn't. Did we? Oh, okay, well, I'm I'll so give you the floor, Andrew, it. to tell us all how you told us so. About how shitty Bethesda is, because this is your time to shine. So, so Bethesda um, apparently had a collector's edition of Fallout seventy six, which two hundred dollars worth. Two hundred dollars, yes. $200. You got you got a replica helmet of Fallout man. You got like a, a this, a that. A who gives a shit? It was a, it was a typical collector's edition with a little plaque and some other doodads. Fine, whatever. People pre ordered it, and apparently they shipped them out with um a really shitty bag it was supposed to be a nice nylon. canvas bag but instead they sent this cheap cut for cost budget nylon bag that didn't give a fuck so a bunch of people reasonably complained they went hey we saw in the photos that when we paid for this thing we were gonna get this canvas wait 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 wait, wait. andrew what just i just want to add this little this little bit on there it yeah. was advertised as a high quality yes. canvas bag on yes. all the posters on their own website even after yes. launch it was advertised as as a canvas bag yes. like a nice quality so canvas bag. So the people complained, which you know, obviously they would. They said, hey, we saw these advertisements, we saw what was in the pack and what the fuck is this bag? And one of the first responses that a guy tweeted out that he got was Bethesda just flat out telling him oh yeah, um, that was the prototype and it turned out to be too expensive to make, so enjoy your shitty bag. And then and <laughs> the, the, phrase, the phrase he said was we aren't planning on doing anything yeah, about it. Yeah, we're not going to yeah, <laughs> literally do his face. We're doing nothing about this. So There's later... Some, somebody sent me that, and I would, I couldn't believe that it was real. So later... Yeah, people, everyone believed it was fake, but yeah. no, they proved that it was authentic. That's kind of like that email. That's kind of like that Louis C.K. bit about rental cars, where, you know, he calls him because he, he, like, took off and left it there. Just the response of just going, yeah, what are you going to do? We did it. You know, and it's like, it's, that doesn't work <laughs> yeah, like that, man. Yeah. Especially with the internet and the internet with video games. You don't think people are just going to be like, oh, oh, okay, sorry, it's too expensive. I totally understand. I paid oh, you $200. Yeah. That's it's totally cool. $200 fucking collector's <laughs> item and they can't afford canvas. We're not even close to done on this fucking story, yeah. boys. Nice. So later, so later Bethesda gets so many complaints and so much bullshit and gut for this. They send out a tweet. They send out a fucking tweet on the Fallout 76 thing, and it says, We're very sorry for this bag thing. We apologize that the 200... They even reiterate the price to remind you it was $200. And they say, <laughs> We're very sorry that this bag in the $200 collector's version was not up to snuff for our customers and this and that. Please contact our service department, and they will assist you in granting you 500 in-game Fallout atoms. Now, boys... 500 atoms in Fallout is $5. It is $5 of money. And if you go to the Fallout 76 Atom store, where you can buy cosmetics and items with the atoms, the 500 atoms equates to a door and a rug in game. That's it. That's what you can get. A little door and a little rug. How completely out of touch they are, especially with the gaming community on the internet, where it's like, uh -huh. You thought that making it better would be giving in-game currency, which is like, it's almost like saying, you know what, guys, <laughs> to fix this, you know, I, I'll, we'll give you 
um, a broken version of PUBG. Is that cool? It's like what people complain about. <laughs> they're giving as the reward. It's like, how exactly. would you think oh, that would fix the problem? Like a, in a, okay, you know what? I'll make you whole. I'll give you two Snickers bars. And boys, wait, you know? I, 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 am, I have bad news. The story is still not over. Later, I, a, a little sleuthy person on Reddit was doing some shopping of their own. Apparently, the Fallout 76 canvas bag they advertised, you can buy yourself on bulk mm-hmm. clothing and apparel websites for less than five dollars. Oh my! God. Yeah, <laughs> for less just than all, all the the only difference is it doesn't have the little Fallout seventy six monogram sewn into it. That's it. It's the same exact bag they advertised. So it's better because it doesn't say Fallout seventy six. <laughs> <laughs> See, with with all this shit that's happening by this point, I truly believe if you lost money on Fallout seventy six, which by the way they're not even offering refunds on anymore, basically because of their support, oh my just God. fucking. They were you never over. offering refunds. That's why. Oh, yeah. That's why they. That's why they sold it through their little Bethesda launch. I, I am, because they can get a, away with that. I am fully now of the belief, I've said a lot of things about Bethesda, but I've completely believed this. If you bought Fallout 76 and you can't get a refund or you feel you lost your money, you completely deserve it. Like, there, there is no coming back from this. How can you trust this company by this point at all for anything? I don't... I, oh, I understand... A, I understand your frustration towards them, Andrew, but you have to at least look at, like, the good things they do. They've confirmed that they're using the same engine for the new Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah, that too. They're new. <laughs> That's El- it. Elder so we won't, we won't be taken out, Elder, out of the experience. It's, it's not even Elder Scrolls I'm astonished by. <laughs> Fucking Starfield, which is yeah. supposed a to be new their IP. big new IP. Their brand new... Look, we make new games, guys. We have a new series. It's still <laughs> using the same same engine yeah what I'm the someone, fuck? there's no issue with using the same engine a lot of games do but this engine is just terrible it's, it's, it's yeah. like it's how old is so it it bad. came out with oblivion right it's disgustingly Gabriel. old it was yeah. morrowind i think i think yeah, it was even it's, it's over 10 years old it's been proven and it's it, and that's the other thing it's been proven to be a piece of shit call of duty uses the same engine every game but it works it runs at 60 frames a second it does what they need to do for the games the pl- whatever the fuck the game brio or the embryo engine has been proven time and time again to be buggy buggy and unreliable and hard to mod and complicated and shitty they use the excuse well bethesda does that it's the only engine that they can use that allows for their immersive worlds these, these large triple a <laughs> games yeah. they, look, look at gta look at gta let's even go in their genre look at the witcher the witcher is an astonishingly yeah. good game that has all the rpg shit they want they can let's suck just, my dick no it's marketing talk that when they say that, all they mean is we don't want to pay 5% royalties exactly. to Unreal Engine. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's all they mean. It's embarrassing. Back when Fallout 4 came out, I was already... Because I remember playing Skyrim on the 360 and thinking, like, you know, I can't wait until... Even though I, I really did enjoy Skyrim, uh, like, seeing water far away and noticing at the time, like, oh, that kind of looks like shit. I can't wait till their next <laughs> game is going to look so good. And I remember <laughs> buying Fallout 4, and if you guys all, I'm assuming maybe you, all of you played Fallout 4, when you go I, up yeah, in I whatever did. the fucking helicopters are in the game, I don't remember the names of them, and you look down, and you're like, this looks like a game on the 360, and I'm playing this on the PS4. Like, what? Why it looks this exactly look sh- the same. They, yeah. They've made no, like, technical <laughs> improvement. I think it even looks worse. So, it's because their fan base is complacent. Yeah. That's it. No one Jackson, cares, because so t- their I'm audience can tired. mod it. I'm just so tired of you guys bad mouthing them like this. Like Jesus Christ, you don't realize the kind of work they did on the engine. They added new lighting effects for oh Fallout 76. <laughs> yeah. and, then, you know, and then, like, cut to the video where the lights are shining through the ground. Up at the I just, I feel like this is. is an effect of them all being in this echo chamber where Bethesda. I guess they all of them looked at all the other game companies and saw that their motto is the customer is always wrong. And look at those guys, they always just, they piss in the gamers' faces, and they never have to, they don't have any problems, so I can't, so we just send them a nylon back, fuck them. Kaya, you but know, you know exactly what it is, time. right? It's, it's all the cult behind Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and that's it. If, if Bethesda made original games and did not have the licenses for Fallout and Skyrim, imagine Skyrim comes out, and it's the same exact game, but it's Norn Bargainson's Adventure in Elderwand or whatever. No one would have bought it. Elderwind. No one would yeah. have given a fucking shit. It, all it is is this little cult that goes, oh, oh man, the Elder Scrolls and the Fallout, I love them and I remember them and they're so good. So they give Bethesda all these passes like, oh, they, it's glitchy and shit and you're ripping me off, but hey, you gave me Elder Scrolls, so you're okay. 
It's it's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic, and I can't. I said it laugh. when when Fallout Four came out. This is how it's always felt like to me, and I, I told this to uh, Gus and my brother. Um, the creation it's Creation Engine, right? The name of it. Yeah. The Creation um, Engine. Gabriel or something. Yeah. It feels. No, 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 yeah, Creation Engine. It feels like you're playing with action figures. Like that's what yeah. the characters coming up to you. It feels like if you just. <laughs> edited in a big hand holding everybody and moving them along. <laughs> That's what playing their games feel like now. Oh it's like, God. replace that shit. I just played... I'm still in the middle of Red Dead 2 right now. Oh, it's like, that's a, a new modern game that looks fucking incredible. If we're just talking about graphics, it's like, 76 looks like shit. I know it they does. had those yeah, those shots of the rays coming through. It's just so baffling. And even, and even then, they fucking... They have all these arguments of like, oh, you know, it's... Bethesda makes a bad game, but they make a good base. It's so good with mods, and there's all these great mods. That doesn't mean that they make good games. That means that the com- mm. the community comes in and fixes their shit. It's Working pathetic. Working there has to be terrible, like Jackson said. Imagine how, like being a talented programmer or 3D designer, and then some executive comes in and tells you, well, you know, we're planning on porting this to 47 different platforms, so make sure it can run on iOS 2. <laughs> they are stuck there and bragging Tom about. Like, Give me my jacket. I'm going on stage. <laughs> really? And then he's done for six six months <laughs> hyping the shit up. To be fair, I checked their Twitter today, and Bethesda is actually planning on making everybody whole. They tweeted this <laughs> earlier today. We are finalizing manufacturing plans for replacement canvas bags Whoa. for Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition. If you purchase the CE, I don't know what that is. Like this please edition. visit. Blah blah blah, and submitted tickets by January January thirty first, two thousand nineteen. We'll arrange to send you a replacement as soon as the bags are ready. So by like two months from now is when their replacement project ends. They still have to uh, manufacture the bags, and then I guess five to six months from now you'll get them. What do you think the really... player base size is going to be of 76 at that time? <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be like 10 people. 76 players. It's going to be Lawbreakers 76. You know what I'm really hoping for, Eddie? I'm really hoping for it. The Game Awards is in three days. We're recording this on the third. I am mm-hmm. hoping. I really hope. I, I I think this might be the year. Todd Howard or someone else from Bethesda goes on stage and finally people start booing. Just, just we it finally get happen. those sweet so. deserved boos. He, he, he is going to be at the game awards. I really yeah. hope people finally start booing or not taking this shit anymore. I hope oh, this man. could be oh, the year. I can't wait for the Polygon articles calling them man children and racist or something. I know. Was it not good enough for you? They worked so hard on this game that they just copy and pasted. You have a Fuck. phone. It looks good on a small screen. Just play it on your phone. Yeah, but do, wait for it to come guys... out on the Switch so that way you can play it on a plane and be amazed. <laughs> Do you guys think they – do you think it was as sinister of, like, planning 76 not to be as bad as it was? But I, I can't tell if they decided to be lazy with having, you know, no NPCs and robots and bad quests or if they got halfway through development and were like, oh, my God, we can't do it. We can't do half of the things we want to do. I feel like that's most of the things is Todd and all of them dream up these giant plans. And they say that when they're developing. They're like, the next Elder Scrolls can't be made on this generation because it's just too it's gonna be too crazy guys and then it comes out this is on the same fucking engine it's like how is it that oh, crazy God. if it's gonna look and you play what, the same you know what i really honestly believe it was i believe that they sat down and their initial goal was we're gonna take the fun of fallout and the big world of fallout and we're gonna make it online and add your friends and you can all quest but then as they were going in they went you know Everyone's going to play it with their friends. Why don't we just let the fun come be from come from you playing with your friends? Fuck characters, fuck quest lines, fuck NPCs. Just talk to your friends and make your own fun. So they just kept cutting out all this shit or not bothering to work on stuff because they thought, well, as you know, if we just give them a little thing, all the all the friends and people they talk to will fill in the gaps. That's not how it works, though. That's not at yeah, all I'm how it works. Yeah, I'm always surprised by companies, game companies, uh, putting faith in role playing online it does not work not it's, at all i mean even like red dead i'm i'm actually i think it's pretty bare but i'm having some fun with red dead online right now but it doesn't feel like companies will pretend like something like red dead online 
you'll be, you know, walking into a saloon with your friends and drinking. And it's really you're just ta- you're fucking around with your friend online. It's not you don't yeah, feel like two cowboys. Your baby crying in the background. Yeah, the, back the only time role playing like online that. actually happens is when you go to those kids servers in like Roblox or something, and they're like, "Let's do Teen Titans role play." I'm Beast Boy. Oh, and I walk up to Raven, say hi, Raven, and no one wants to do that. No one wants in their sixty dollars. Who are you hanging around, yeah. Andrew? That's you- so dumb. But if you could link that server, um, <laughs> <maybe you're> just- <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying though is the only people who do serious role play online are either the group that play Dungeons and Dragons or the kids who want to pretend to be stuff. And for the other, I don't know, ninety nine percent of know. your player base, they're not going to play along with this shit. People, they aim to break games and utilize all the shit that came out of them. Every Everyone makes these games, and then the community breaks them in 30 minutes, what took them, like, hours to do. And they're like, we didn't know that this would happen. How could this possibly happen? Or in happen? Bethesda's case, the community, or case, uh, they fixed the game in, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, that one thing with the menus, wasn't <laughs> oh, it? Yeah. A day? <laughs> and somebody made a mod that fixed it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But listen, let's, you're let's, not gonna... Uh, let's, yeah, okay. I was Go. well. I was gonna say you're not gonna need a mod to fix movement watches because they're already incredibly oh, stylish shit. from the beginning. Yeah, you like that one, Eddie? Because yeah, I know I, the, do. I, I know what you're really gonna like: movement watches. There's there's a style or design that you will personally like out of their large selection. Movement watches are all about looking good while keeping it simple. They don't tell you how many steps you're taking. They don't explode up your wrist. They don't do anything flashy. Nothing fancy. They are a nice, timeless timepiece you like what i did there because a watch goes good with nearly any outfit for any occasion and you can get a very nice slick looking watch for only 95 dollars if you wanted this same type of watch from a mall it's christmas time the mall's first of all going to be crowded and packed and miserable and when you get there you're going to pay 400 dollars for the same type of watch you can join over 1.5 million other owners of movement watches in over 160 countries if you go to mvmt.com slash official because that way you can get a holiday gift box from movement with 15% off free shipping and free returns. Just for our viewers, mvmt.com slash official. We all wear... Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah, we all wear them. Yeah, we all, we <laughs> all personally wear them as well. We're not we're not just talking them up. We all personally enjoy these watches. We're all wearing them right now, and we look cool. Eddie, spell MVMT in your favorite Fallout mods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, Eddie, even harder, ch- even easier challenge. Spell MVMT out in your favorite shitty Bethesda practices. Spell Ooh. it out. What the fuck? Wait, sorry, hold on. I just twisted my brain. So, around. like M, making the same game over and over again. Oh, no. Ooh, very boring games. <laughs> yeah, very boring games. Come on, Eddie, keep it going. Mismanaging customer relations. <laughs> oh, no. And T, it's time to buy another edition of Skyrim. Tuberculosis. <laughs> yeah, they gave everyone tuberculosis. <laughs> Remember that scandal no one talks about when they package Skyrim with deadly diseases? <laughs> Fucking anti It was supposed to be Bethesda. chlamydia, but then they couldn't get the production cost <laughs> yeah, right. It was too <laughs> expensive to engineer chlamydia. <laughs> Tuberculosis was just a beta. Oh god, that's brilliant. I'm ready. Eddie, is there any what are you extremely passionate about? Movement watch it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, we we're gonna need you to come back next week as well. Yeah. You know what's uh been kind of pissing me off lately and i'm i'm still undecided on it but i actually bought battlefield 5 um oh. a couple, well i got it as a birthday gift well what do you think of um, it? i'd love to hear about it well he was he was going on Andrew. well i want to <laughs> i want to start it up so it seems I've, like i brought up the discussion i've only <laughs> played about two hours of it i loved battlefield 4 i played a little bit of 3 I was disappointed by Battlefield 1, but still played about, a, I think I played like a month of it, because mm-hmm. my brother and I play, uh, that's like the one game we both play, like a ton. Um, wait, 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 a month of game time? No, 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 for like a for month. a month, sorry, yeah, I should clarify, okay. for a month. Yeah. There's See, a month I, of game time, yeah, I was disappointed by it, but I spent a, an entire month of my life in it. I'm, I'm um, so glad you're saying this, though, because so far I've had the exact same feelings on every Battlefield as you, so please continue. Yeah, it's, just because... I think one of the biggest things is I loved in Battlefield 4 there was this sense of mobility. If yeah. your your team yeah. was getting slam dunked on, you could just drive a Jeep around the edge or, like, go in a helicopter and jump out. And then, yeah. You know, if you have, like, two – only two people really playing together can turn a game around if they're communicating. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's – it's just all fucking lanes still. And now especially – it's Battlefield 5 – 
I want to like it. And I think the, the gunplay is more fun than one. Mm-hmm. But the maps are like you want to ask Dice if they were trying to make a fun game or if they were just really <laughs> just still trying to make the Frostbite engine look good. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like. I mean, I don't know. It's just It just feels like the maps are way smaller, but they're like, don't worry. We're just going to throw a bunch of shit in it and it'll be fine. See that's what that's what gets me to maybe like for a month every year reinstall Battlefield 4 and play it cuz Battlefield 4 not only still has a player base it's a bigger player base than Battlefield 1 right now and mm. it, it just it just it had like this sense of you can do anything and you can approach fights and conflicts and stuff how you want like Battlefield 4 you got all right you spawn as an infantry on a flag fine you can spawn at the base take a helicopter take a tank if you want to flank and go get the back flags that no one's even fighting at you can do that and help your team this and that blah, blah, blah. but Battlefield 1 I I haven't played 5 so I don't know if it still has that problem Battlefield 1 was fun but it had this problem of like okay everyone's at this flag every single player yeah. is at this one flag it's still that it's still yeah, that. except it's that's all that the whole game would now. be yeah, they split it up now where it's not everyone at one flag, but, like, everyone's at a flag at any moment. So you go to, like, C in the game, and you're trying to capture it, and you kill a guy, and instantly there's a guy directly behind you shooting you. It's, like, every right. – and I would say, I'm at least on console, because uh, I play on PS4, I'm a good Battlefield player. Most of the time, I'm one or two for the rank of the game. Um, and especially if we win, uh, like for the entire game Mm -hmm. and in this one, so in this one, like I can tell when they're just, the spawning is insane. And they know that with battlefield four being successful with the player base, because I'm not kidding. I'm holding it right now. (laughs) Uh, in battlefield five, when you open up the case, you know, there's always that like little sheet of paper on the inside, on the other side of the disc. It's not a code sheet. Like, you know, just. Just the, when there's like a paper, if there's like a pre-order code or something like that, when there's oh, just right. on the opposite side of the disc on the inside, um, there's just an ad for Battlefield Four, which is bizarre. Yeah. Like I'm looking at it right now, just it says Battlefield Four Modern Military All Out War, and when you flip it out or flip it over, it's a Battlefield One ad. But they set Battlefield Four for when you open to look at your new game. Imagine opening like Halo Reach, and there's a Halo Two ad inside. Yeah, <laughs> like that yeah. doesn't make any sense. There's a very passionate fan base behind 4, and it's because 4 is, to a lot of people, the peak of the series. To me, it's the peak of the series. Yeah, I still play it. Yeah, I love it. We should, we should, we should be friends. We should squad up and play some 4, <laughs> man. I love 4. But um, they, it just seems like DICE just doesn't have an understanding of what they like. I mean, like, you, do you remember those moments in Battlefield where you, uh, you would be losing and getting your ass kicked, so you would just spawn on the furthest away flag... And then you would take a jeep from the main spawn away from everything, and you drive all around the map, and then you'd sit on a far flag. And the only time anyone would even know that you were taking it is when it was like, "Oh, you lost that flag," and then and then finally yeah. you'd split the team up, and the movement would still keep going. I never felt I could do that in one. It just always felt in one that no matter where I was going, it was taking me back to that main hub of activity. You know what yeah, I mean? And- yeah, especially with that. I mean, it's even worse now because they give a boost to the losing team with capture speed. So, oh, um, wow. Jesus. yeah. And also, uh, if I don't know how many of you guys like regularly play Battlefield, but the main mode Andrew. conquest is like <laughs> ticket bleed. <laughs> yeah, I it's think, just I think the I'm main the thing. Only one. Sorry, all right, then I'll stop boring you guys with it in a second. But it just like <laughs> the the main uh, game conquest that's like famous for is just you know you have a certain amount of tickets and whoever's winning is losing more tickets faster. Whoever gets to zero first loses. Um, in this game, I played two hours and every single match was nearly a tie, which is not how the game series yeah. usually runs. So I looked it up and yeah, they just give huge boosts to the losers. I don't God. get why game companies right now. This is not just for Battlefield; it's for everything. Are like trying to make it so nobody loses but somebody has to lose every game match so i don't know why they're making it like but trying to be closer feel, and closer you feel it good exactly yeah yeah because it makes you coming back i have a question for you guys then what is the most disappointed like what is the franchise maybe not that you love the most but you think has been ruined the most of anything diablo yeah. I, I mean that's that's an objective oh, answer yeah. you can give yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say anything. Oh, well, it has it hasn't been released yet. Though. Yeah, it could be great, Charlie. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. We all have could phones. Be. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm gonna take my own it's personal. The game Brio engine. I'm gonna take my own personal answer. Anything owned by Konami, so Metal Gear, Silent Hills, any anything that they used to own that they just dumped and shit on because those just hurt. See, 
Did you see the Silent Hill cons- conspiracy thing? Where, uh, what is it that Kojima is actually making Silent Hills, but it's yeah, he's else? making PT, but he fucking li- I I don't think Konami, uh, a company, would ever allow uh, such bad press for themselves. But they also don't give a fuck about video games anymore, so I have no idea. Well, what but if it's... Kojima ever the ruse master? This is actually the longest con he's ever pulled, and it is that it would is be Silent great. Hills. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'd shit my pants. Did you guys play PT at all? I did. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was yeah. so cool. I I just remember I liked it. it came out in the middle of the summer, so I had really good memories of just having friends come over and play it and scaring the shit of our, out of ourselves. I th- I think it was uh only as good as it was because it was just like a vertical slice of a game. Mm, if you stretch agreed. that out yeah. to be a full game, I'm sure yeah. that there would have been limitations. Well, the thi- I did think though the concept trailer that he released was really cool cuz I loved the idea of a door flying across a hallway and slamming into a wall, and then there's a corridor there where the door was because there was just nothing before. I don't know if you guys saw that trailer, but yeah. it was just like a door slamming into a wall, and then there's like a tunnel behind it. See, I, I was optimistic on it in general because, yeah, if you took the PT idea, it wouldn't last, but Silent Hill as a series is more about like atmospheric horror and kind of just being unnerved and creeped mm-hmm. out. So I'm guessing if that was like a section of it, and then the rest of the game was just you're in Silent Hill and you're Norman Reedus and you're looking for all this spooky shit. I don't know. I like I like PT and I, I think it had a lot of potential. And then Konami went, no, fuck video games. Bye. Get out. You're fired. Mm. God, fuck Konami, man. I, I'm so bitter. I like Konami. You do? How about you, Charlie? Give me give me a disappointment. That's not what? that's not Diablo. You must it could have be movies disappointment. too or anything. Yeah, like, like a personal one. Give us a personal one, Charlie. Well, I mean, the easy answer for movies is the new Mummy with Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. That mm, one's, yeah. Fair, that, fair. That's a fat fucking stinker. I really hope they do go through with the dark universe, though. I'd love to see more <laughs> stinkers like that. Watch more of your childhood get ruined. Well, I mean, at that point, it's all IPs. Like, they hyped up a uh, uh, fucking Jekyll and Hyde and all that stuff. I'd like to see more train wrecks from that universe, and I really hope they didn't get discouraged by it bombing, because I uh, genuinely want to see more. Didn't they downright cancel the extended universe? So I'd, I would up? call that a bit more than discouragement. They canceled the extended universe. They said they weren't going to do another one. Oh, I didn't know they canceled mm. it. Well, I thought they did. There yeah. hasn't been another movie. It's only yeah, been didn't, a year. didn't the mummy bomb so hard that they canceled the whole thing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. they did. I thought you I were the one not. who told us that, Charlie. No, I, I never. I, th- those words never left my mouth. All I know is it was a bad movie, but I wanted to see more bad movies like it. Fair. Wasn't the Mummy the one that they released a trailer with like missing sound effects in the audio, and mm-hmm. you just hear Tom Cruise yeah. scream? Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. It's a trailer <laughs> where it's in the helicopter crash, and it's supposed to be a big old like it's it's not an extended trailer, but that scene they let linger during the trailer. And it's supposed to be like the helicopter's going into a free fall and everyone's falling around the plane, but the only audio track is the vocals. So it's just this completely silent helicopter crash, but all you hear is Tom Cruise and the other actors just screaming the whole time. <laughs> it's great. I love it. I've got, I've got a question for you, Eddie. Have you seen the new Fantastic Beasts movie? Dude. <laughs> Did you see my tweets? Are you asking that why? Or... or... Because I fucking hated that movie so much. Oh my goodness, Eddie! Thank God you're Dude. here. I, I I was ranting about that on the previous episodes as well. It is something special of a bad I, movie. I was talking about it so much that I know I was annoying people in my life because I hated it so much. And I usually don't for movies, but holy shit, it was so <laughs> fucking bad, dude. I spent the whole yep. movie trapped in my own brain, fucking criticizing every single sentence they said because there was oh my god no yeah. good part of it. Especially, I think my biggest thing for people who haven't seen it, I I doubt anyone's listening and hasn't seen Fantastic Beasts and yeah, doesn't want a small a moment case, spoiled. But, yeah, but this is going to be spoiler heavy. There's a this is even toward the beginning. The two like goofy side love interest characters is like the fatter dude from Balls of Fury. Who I actually like, and he's actually the most likable character of that movie, even though in this he, is all right. uh, he doesn't act like a normal human, just like all the characters. They don't per- behave like people do. But they're him car- and- they're caricatures yeah. of J.K. Rowling's imagination. Yeah, so he had the love interest of he was a muggle or whatever the fuck. What is it? Nomadge, the dumb American name Nomadge. for it. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> It sounds like you're making and, it up on the spot. Dude, I know. It's so <laughs> stupid. And then, so, like, he started dating a wizard, and they're not the main characters, but when they meet up with the main character, Newt, in the second movie, for some reason, even though the two of them are in love, the the woman has enchanted him, 
to basically date raped him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To come to London and get married, even though he doesn't think it's a good idea. So then they break the enchantment. And he's really not even that upset. Like, he's not worried about the fact that he was enchanted. He's just kind of out of it and like, whoa. So they have a small argument. And for a second, after she enchanted him to get married, he almost calls her crazy, but doesn't say it. And she gets so upset by that, she leaves. And now it's his job in the movie to mend their relationship. That's she real. She was date rape, too. It's yeah. embarrassing. It's so fucking bad, and everybody, especially, there's certain, like, all the love scenes, I wonder if J.K., is J.K. Rowling married? Or Rowling, how do you say? I don't no, know if she's, she's ever had a powerful. relationship with anybody in her life, because she writes love scenes like I'd imagine a 12-year-old girl on Tumblr, Tumblr would write fan fiction. That's what it was, it was fan fiction. It's, yeah. It's fan fiction of her own work, somehow, she managed to fucking fan fiction her own property it's there, impressive yeah and there's a scene in it where like the whole all of paris just gets covered in a like a blanket and they're like oh they're calling the bad guys and then they don't explain what the blanket is like i don't understand <laughs> what covering a blanket over a bunch of buildings does i don't know what that was at all it's meant to be dark and mysterious yeah it's magic <laughs> fuck you it's magic stop trying to explain it <laughs> And they even spend most of the first movie trying to stress, like, we guys, we really can't show the real world about magic. You know, every – which is the boring conflict of the Wizarding World because all of Harry Potter was Voldemort and then they kind of worried a little bit about, you know, revealing it to the world. Um, but then the second movie, I could not tell what scenes were, like, hidden by magic for just wizards and what were just out on the street. I had no idea. Just the pacing of that movie was all over the place. It was so hard to follow. Yeah, really was. But well, you saw it too, Andrew? No, I didn't. I'm just agreeing. No, but... I was but, going to say, I, Eddie... I, I, go ahead. You're half right. She is... She does have a spouse, apparently, whom she okay. married in 2001. Kids. But... Yeah. yeah, but her Wikipedia photo is her holding a glass of wine, so she kind of half <laughs> yeah, she, meets the yeah. cliche. Yeah, I'm looking stereotype. at the same photo. If everyone playing along at home wants to check this out, she looks incredibly fucking slosh. She looks like that aunt that shows up to every family reunion and never shuts the fuck up. Did you guys see, um, you know, uh, Jenny Nicholson on YouTube? Mm-mm. She'll, like, criticize movies. She did that, uh, it went viral on Reddit, uh, that Suicide Squad, like, board meeting video. Um, we're like trying mm, to pitch it mm-hmm. to people and she made one making fun of it and she highlighted a point that I didn't think of, which is, uh, spoilers again. How the fuck do you say his name? Dumbledore said it different than everyone else in the movie. Is it Grindelwald? Grindelwald. Yeah, that was, Vol. he really stressed it too. Like he was correcting everybody and it was, there was no context <laughs> for it, but Grindelwald pitches it like, Hey guys, we have to stop the Holocaust. And then we have to root for the heroes <laughs> to stop him. That's her point. She recognized that. But why would you root for heroes that want to keep the Holocaust like going? Can I just say I love the mental image of, and then Dumbledore said, guys, we have to stop the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite literally the plot, uh, I need though. It to comes see out this of movie nowhere. now. Well, set this story. Really? This sounds amazing. To set the stage for Wizard Adolf. <laughs> sounds amazing. The, I think my one of my biggest problems with the writing of it is that a lot of the time she'll show like an object or she'll mention something and then wait until the end of the movie to show you. So you're waiting the whole time confused and then they show you and instantly you just go, I'm sure she thinks you'll go, oh my God. But your reaction is, oh, that's fucking dumb. I shouldn't have been confused that whole movie for that payoff. The big spoiler, which I don't even understand it. Um, the big spoiler for it is that they they keep showing this one little object with like it's like a little crystal thing with two things floating inside of it and they keep showing you like hey guys it's significant and the whole movie the cops are trying to get Dumbledore to fight Grindelwald because they're the two most popular wizards or not or powerful wizards for no reason we are not told any reason why they are <laughs> they're um, not the random. most powerful the, the most yeah. popular that's why they have to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are though really they are the two most popular and that's why they're the most powerful they don't give us any other reason other than like hey guys they're really powerful but we, I don't see them do magic like either really in the whole movie but this item that they talk about is that um Apparently they were lovers at Hogwarts and they made an item that was a blood pact that they would never fight each other with magic. Which who imagine yeah. if you're just hanging out with your friend and you're like, Hey, you wanna promise that we'll never kill each other? 
Like, well, what? okay, but it's not friendship. It's they're gay. They're lovers. That's yeah, why they make was, the blood but pacts. It, but I was going to say, we brought this up in the in one of the past episodes, Eddie, and Charlie told us about this blood pact thing. And I said, well, couldn't Dumbledore just stand in front of people as like a human meat shield? Yes. And deflect all of Gumbledump's attacks? <laughs> and Charlie said, no, that's, that's why they're using proxy. So I thought, well... Couldn't if Dumbledore gave everybody a blood transfusion, would they also be immune to <laughs> Grumble Down? <laughs> Couldn't this happen? Wouldn't they be the, immune to his magic? That's the beautiful. problem with Fantastic Beasts is the second you think about anything that happens yep. in the movie, it falls apart. Like the second yep. you even <laughs> It's any moment in it. And even, like, the fact that they're lovers isn't an excuse for, like, can you imagine if you were with your girlfriend and you're just like, hey, we really need to make a blood pack so we don't kill each other one day. Like, I would be, I would be so worried prenup. if somebody said that to me. It's a magician's prenup. It's just, hey, if we ever yeah. divorce, you don't if, get to kill you, me and take half my stuff. If you get Sign married this. in the Harry Potter world, it's part of the vows. It's like a common cultural yeah. thing. I will not kill you even if you do the yeah. wizard holocaust. I promise to have and to hold you and to not cast Lingardium Leviosa. There's another moment that pissed me off in the beginning where they wanted to show, I guess they wanted to show that Grindelwald was like worse than Voldemort. So they raided a house because they needed a hideout in Paris and they killed the family and then they saw, oh no, there's a baby there. We killed the parents and they have a baby. And he just like <laughs> sends a woman in. You you see a moment where he's like, "Should I kill this baby so I seem worse than Voldemort?" And then he just like walks out of the room, and some lady does it. So is she worse than Voldemort? Like I don't fucking know. None of it. It's meant I mean, to it was... show that he has true power over his followers, Eddie. Okay. <laughs> but wasn't Voldemort? I mean, doesn't Voldemort just kind of sort of forget to kill Harry? Wasn't that? No, he no, tried he, to he kill tries him. To yeah. oh. That's why he has the it scar was, on his it forehead. His, it was his mom's love Ooh. that protected him. Okay, yeah. well then, no, he, he's not worse than Voldemort because Voldemort tried. Just because he couldn't doesn't mean he didn't want to. But the worst right. thing to do in a prequel is to show that the villain isn't as bad as the villain from the original yeah. movies. Because there's no reason to fear them then because we saw the other one get beat. So, And we already know. This is one thing that pissed me off is, you know, in L.A. there's like more... Um, movie billboards than like any other city. I saw so many billboards before I came home. I'm in Chicago right now um, where it was all fucking 300 characters from the movie in one oh, picture. So and it was, who will change the future was the tagline. And we know the future. It's Harry Potter. Yeah. We know the future. <laughs> so what's the point of any of these movies if they're the, the reason to go is to see how the future will change when we all know it. That's that's part of the problems with prequels. That's why I don't like them. I already know yeah. what's going to happen. Well, to that's all what I love about characters. Red Dead is they give you little pieces for it in the original story, and then you just want to know what happened because you care about the characters. Charlie some, and yeah, I, some uh, franchises pull it off right. I, for example, I like Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what happens to Saul Goodman, but you're still into it because he's yeah. a really good character. But other than that, everything has to be exaggerated because chronologically speaking. It's a sequel. Yeah. It doesn't fit, though. Charlie and I were actually talking about this a couple weeks ago. We can't think of a single movie franchise. Like, not games or TV, because there are good examples. But the, I don't. I can't think of a single movie franchise where the prequel is ever the superior installment. Ugh, I, I, have, I had one. Fuck. Did you now? I'm I don't wrong, believe yeah. you. Because I looked, I even Star looked up a Wars. list. I got desperate because I could not think of it. I even looked up a list. One of the top rated ones is the third Planet of the Apes movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, all of those count. If all those count as prequels, I actually really love those movies. Except half of Rise of the Planet of the Apes is like a weird romance with James Franco, uh, but I, the other half of those I love. I openly will admit they're not great movies. Like I, I wouldn't hype them up as good. But I, the I prequels enjoyed to the Planet of the Apes. Them. Yeah, they're they're all right. They're they're fine. I I enjoyed watching them personally, but I, I also don't think that they're objectively like amazing or anything. No prequels are always a problem. But to get back, Charlie, I wouldn't really want to hear this scene because you didn't mention this last time we may, were making fun of J.K. Rowling. Dumbledore mentions he has to stop the Holocaust. How does that go down? No 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 no. no. <laughs> Grindel Grindelwald. That's how he. 
it's like this big moment, like after he's put the blanket over New York City or whatever the fuck <laughs> it was, and everyone comes into a circus tent, all the bad guys. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm. I don't hate no madges. I, I I don't hate them. I want to help mm-hmm. them. Uh, this is the future for which I have seen. Then he shows like World War Two footage. Uh, he's like, we must prevent this from happening. It's it's obviously like the Holocaust, which is why I said like, oh. uh, it's well. Wait, that's so why I'm saying it's setting guy? the stage for Wizard Hit- Hitler. What? H- how is he the bad guy then? Well, he's not anymore once she <laughs> showed that. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, okay, in J.K. Rowling's <laughs> mind, how is he the bad guy? Why am I supposed to root? Because he wants the guy. to kill people to stop that from yeah that and she, yeah that's fine that's fine by me if you have to kill ten <laughs> children to stop the Holocaust I agree do it but yeah she does the kind of lazy thing where you know it's the same thing uh, this was again in Jenny Nicholson's video where like you know how Voldemort and his followers were supposed to be you know basically Nazis and she takes that kind of like they're basically Nazis guys but then their plot is to stop. Nazis. So I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing that makes sense about the platform. No, he's, he's probably just manipulating them. Yeah. Well, I had a into what? That... Stopping the Holocaust? Look okay, <laughs> no, manipulate away. Manipulating them with the <laughs> no, Holocaust. the wizards. He's yeah, like that. They would want to do that so they can take over and make the wizards like rule the world. Yeah, Jackson and I were tossing around some speculation, and I came up with the fun little idea that I think J.K. Rowling might explore, where Grindelwald polyjuices into Hitler. And conducts <laughs> the Holocaust himself. <laughs> well, you, that was my idea, first of all. Thank you for stealing it. But Bullshit! I said he polyjuices into Hitler. You mm. can check the text message logs. So he's like, ah, <laughs> guys, never mind, I like Jews, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he fuses the situation. I don't remember what the fuck other speculation we had, but I really that's think that's where J.K. Rowling yeah, would so go. If a mage wanted to stop World War II, it would be so easy for him to just cast a fireball at Hitler, teleport out, in and out. Well, that's why, why none of the Harry Potter argument? stories are in any major real-world events, because they could just end it, and if they didn't, they're an asshole. So yeah. <laughs> that's why they don't bring it toward there. But she was like, I'm going to make it after World War One. One of the characters <laughs> is going to be a veteran, and World War Two is coming, and they want to maybe stop it. <laughs> Which, never add a whole new, like, r- powerful race of people into World War II and then just have it happen the way it happened. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't so- it None of it makes sense. Like, if you have a bad guy in a movie, you want the audience to hate that guy if he's a That's real bad what, guy. Watching it was such an issue is everything that happened. I was just, my brother and I, we went to see it because we knew it was bad and we wanted to make fun of it, even though I actually really like Harry Potter. Um, a lot. And so it's, it's this kind of like disappointment, but also a little bit, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, uh, the video Gus and I made on JK Rowling. Um, but we made fun of the fact that she like changes everything to seem more progressive, even though she didn't do it <laughs> yeah, originally. It's a common uh, complaint. It seems. Yeah. So, uh, like I, I just kind of see it now to almost like rag on JK Rowling a little bit because what I, she clearly had only the idea for, the ending scene of it is like kind of this big spectacle. And then she was like, we'll fucking figure it out. I don't know. We'll write something in the beginning. I honestly think what it was is she saw the Avengers with a almost humanized (laughs) Thanos where he has like a motive that a lot of pseudo intellectuals would rally behind. And she's like, well, what if I could do that for Grindelwald where he's not like this super uber bad guy? Maybe he wants to stop the Holocaust. (laughs) It's terrible (laughs) though. I know. She didn't do it well. I wasn't condoning like, that. Thanos is like, well, I, I want to save life, so what if, like, what I if, like, if I people. kill them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what if I kill them so they can't starve to death? <laughs> I'm also, good. For Hitler no is reason. A little, Sorry. Yeah. The, uh, no, go ahead. The girl that enchanted the dude earlier can also read minds, which I, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, she's a God. witch or whatever, whatever the fuck they call it in, in Harry Professor Potter. Professor Xavier, she's um, yeah, So that's all right, I guess, as a plot point. But then she abandons her muggle like boyfriend for Grindelwald for no reason. She could read his mind and know he's evil instantly. And she's just like, the I got to go do she this. Joined- the whole reason she joined Grindelwald was to save their relationship. It yeah, makes no then, sense. Yeah, he's a fucking him. 
purist with like genetics and he hates like them getting married and being muggles like they i guess he said he didn't at the last bit but the rest of the movie he does say that he he's the same as voldemort with it so instantly just read his mind he's fucking lying that's it yeah that's a good i didn't even think like of that bad she, boy she she instantly reads the mind of like nine characters throughout the movie but yep, never but once not the bad on guy. him yeah <laughs> And it just doesn't. She, can't, she made a blood pact with him years ago that she would never read his mind. <laughs> never read his mind. <laughs> Except he complained. Or, oh no, that's Grindelwald. Never mind. Um, it's just I, yeah. Though every scene, it's it's not even you know. There's some frustration stuff with like Zack Schneider's writing where like clearly he wanted like big crazy moments and he didn't really know how to write for it. I don't know what J.K. Rowling was thinking. Like, I would actually like to ask her, like, go scene by scene and be like, all right, so what was the point of this one? Like, what were, what were you doing? <laughs> well, I'd start right from the beginning. So why did you even bother having his mind be erased if it didn't get erased? <laughs> I know. Uh, well, th- I guess they showed at the end that he kind of remembered. But then, yeah, it just didn't. I don't well, know. It, and he didn't even explain that. He's just like, I thought you got erased. No. Well, <laughs> to be yeah. fair, J.K. Rowling could expertly explain all of these plot holes she just needs two bottles of wine and a cat she can pet <laughs> meanwhile yeah but you, you know ha- having not seen it this grindle uh, wild guy sounds like an all right fella i mean he wants to stop the holocaust and he, he doesn't want to <laughs> allegedly hurt you're He's, falling for yeah. him it's not <laughs> it's not for him, as yeah, I'm clear for this as guy it who seems just, who says i don't want six million jews to die yeah <laughs> Sounds like a good. He's lying to, to you. Me. He's going to be the one to kill them. He doesn't like them. He doesn't like no matches. He had a polyjuice potion the whole time. If he wanted them to die, he'd just stay out of it. Also, I don't know if you guys all saw the first one. Did you guys see the first one? I yeah. did. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I, I actually, okay. I didn't mind the first one, but then there's this character Credence in it that's supposed to be like Ugh. a super powerful wizard, and then he straight Credence? up. Yeah, he doesn't make it, it a in the first movie. And they start the second movie, and they're just like, Credence is alive. And he's like, what? I thought he died. And they're just like, he's alive, and he's in Paris, and we know exactly where he is. <laughs> and then he didn't give a shit about who he was in the first movie, and now I guess the only thing he's driven by is like who his family is. Which, like, imagine being an orphan for like 23 years and then just randomly at 23 being like the only thing i care about is finding out my last name that's all i give a shit about which is it the just whole movie and then they eventually uh to lead towards the end they're like well why don't we just check the records <laughs> <laughs> honestly the coolest scene the coolest scene in that movie though was when he's in that house with Nagini and the bounty hunter shows up and then explodes the room. I thought that was really mm, cool. Yeah, I like that when he's kind of blowing shit up with his magic stuff is really cool. And um, this is tempting. This is tempting me to buy a ticket right now to go and see it. But I you know should you should see it. You'd have a it's bad, but it, it's, to, it, it yeah. create it creates good conversation. There's a lot there to unpack. Yeah, <laughs> there's sure. like okay, conversation with who like. <laughs> the person sitting next to you at the theater, just like... Yes, yeah, just in disbelief. Are you seeing this shit? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Hi, I'm, Ka- if- I'm Kaya. Nice to meet you. I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this shit? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to just hang out? Go anywhere else. <laughs> Another thing Make I thought was crazy, movie. too, was in that movie, there's like... And it's, not, it's insane that I could mention this many things, but there's... You remember in the Harry Potter series, there's a prophecy that leads like the whole series that they that one of the books is finding out, like learning it and everything like that, or at least people know it. There's just one prophecy for this movie. Like they just waste an entire prophecy on this movie. But I think it would be cool if you remember the Deathly Hallows animation, like to show Mm -hmm. all the three items. I really like that moment. If they maybe did that in the beginning to show the prophecy for this one to set you up, but there's no exposition at all for this prophecy. Just Mm. some characters kind of half mention it. And it doesn't. It's like I feel like she wrote this movie thinking that everybody going to see it reads her fucking what's the website like pottermore or whatever like they pour through all the lore and she's like everybody's Mm. gonna fucking love this i mean she has to be going through fan fiction for inspiration right isn't that what the cursed child is or the cursed child wasn't it just fan fiction she just approved and then she said it's canon out of nowhere like yeah no one asked her to she she just said it's canon (laughs) and it's yeah so bad it's still making money as a play so i guess that's why she approved it because she didn't want to write a sequel. And the whole 
point of the end of Harry Potter with like Malfoy and stuff is they set aside their differences. And, you know, there's that nodding scene at the end of the movie where they're like, we're cool now. Um, mm-hmm. the, a cursed child, apparently, uh, the biggest plot point is that Harry's son is a Slytherin and he really fucking hates it, which is okay. the least of Harry's problems in his life. So I don't know why it would be that big of a deal, <laughs> but it's canon. So he, it's, he really yeah, does hate it. Yeah. So yeah, Harry's a shithead dad and that's, you're supposed to accept that as canon because she read a fan fiction and was like, well, I can't write good shit anymore. So I guess this will have to do. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm tempted to buy a ticket right now. I, I'd highly it recommend it. Yeah. It's do you, fun, do you but... need to have seen the first one? You don't uh, need to see the first one. I, I, I have seen think... the first one. I vaguely oh. remember it, but oh, it's on Netflix. So I could I wanna, catch up. I want to see it too, and I haven't seen the first one. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the first one either. I... Wait, 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 hang on. Wait, Jackson. Wait, Jackson, you have not seen the first one? Yeah, I haven't seen the first one. But you I'll saw this one? It. How the hell? Yeah. Why? Because just... Charlie made it sound really funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lazy fuck, like, you couldn't even be bothered to check it out on Netflix? Like, skim it at least? Why? Oh it sounded God. even funner just going in blind. Oh, honestly. man, honestly, Jackson's I... convincing Why? me now. But no, if anything, not... it, Charlie makes it sound like it would be more fun if you actually know the lore of the first I mean, one I and did, see I, all the contradictions. I didn't know, did know the lore and stuff. There's no just... connections to make. Yeah, yeah, uh, there's three... Yeah. There's <laughs> There's All literally right. three points that carry over from the first movie. Oh, fuck yeah, me, it really doesn't matter. Charlie's main argument last time was everything that happened in the conclusion of the first movie does, does like means jack shit in yeah. the second. You would be so less like, confused fine. seeing the sequel if you didn't see the first one. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. genuinely mean that. But you might as well see the first one because yeah. you're, you have the time, Kai. I'd, I'd recommend <laughs> going in full throttle. Read your Twitter as well to catch up. Twitter? What, what do you mean? She usually does a lot of like plot stuff on Twitter. Oh, well, yeah. The, uh, her Twitter's it's something else. Yeah, every everybody is black, everybody's Jewish and Asian, and she's so woke. And she meant for that character to be a progressive lesbian. Uh, Dude, yeah, that's what I think. That one of the tweets that has pissed me off more than anything is just her lying when she made the snake <laughs> an Asian woman, and then somebody tweeted at her and was like. How long did you keep a secret from us? And she was like, <laughs> 20 years. And it's like, you were not holding that in for 20 fucking years. You made that up yesterday. What is this about a snake? Quinton brought this up too, and I don't remember. It's Nagini. Like, Nagini, the, the snake, snake from yeah, the main franchise. Voldemort's snake is just, I guess, used to be an Asian girl. Is that yeah. the snake who, it's one of the like last movies, it's slithering across the table while a lady... Yes. Well, some woman's yeah, levitating. In... The one that oh. Neville fucking swipes up. She was a Horcrux. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, ah. God. See, I want to watch the the Harry Potter movies because those were, I think, kind of good. I they're, love yeah, them. They're great. The, they're great. Especially yeah, the first few. Like, the when they're still all kids and it's this nice summer the first movie. Three movies, then. Lighthearted. Yeah, it's little kids, like, solving magic mysteries and stuff. That's fun. That's cool. And then... By the movies four, five, and six, whichever is the one with the maze, the Olympics, yeah, the the Magic one. Olympics. Yeah, Goblet it, of Fire. It goes all, yeah, it goes all moody and goth and all where everything is dark now. Harry is. I actually think up. it does it really well. Uh, yeah, I didn't I like the Order of the Phoenix really? or Goblet, but it's uh, Half Blood Prince and then both Deathly Hollows. I think did it well. My biggest complaint with those movies, though, is they kind of kill very important characters off screen. They're like, oh, what happened to uh. You know, big important character X. Mm. Yeah, he, he oh, died yeah. somewhere. The, for the sure. worst, the worst one with that is at the start of Deathly Hallows One, where they're they're riding along, uh, they're escaping from the Death Eaters, and then Hedwig dies immediately, and no one gives a shit. And then, yeah, I didn't uh, even know that. It's because it happens in a moment where nobody can really talk. They're running, and so in I, the book I, I, you I could hear that. in Harry's head. No, yeah. no, they should have at least shown more of like his face being devastated or something. But he kind of just <laughs> looks back. He's like, "Oh fuck, my eyes dead." All right, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they when they land, they're like, "Oh, what happened to uh, the leader of the good guys? Oh, he died back there. It's all good." Yeah. Mad Eye Moody just fucking disappears. Oh, yeah. yeah, I still I, don't I, get. I forgot. You know, in the books, too, when Mad Eye's in, is it Order of the Phoenix when he just like joins back up and they treat it like Mad Eye and Harry know each other, but the plot of Goblet of Fire is that they don't know who each other, 
who they are. Like, because he was, you well, know. Well, I, I guess they get to know each other over the summer break, maybe. Okay. Because, <laughs> yeah, I remember in the movie that happening and him being like, Mad Eye, what's up? And it's like, you didn't really have a conversation with that dude, like, the entire time. Yeah, <laughs> That's right, because he was trapped in the box. <laughs> yeah, he was trapped in the box, and the villain version of Mad Eye does good things in this story. That's yeah, it's really weird. He, he saves, was helping uh, Harry. Th- I get, I get that he was like helping Harry, th- Harry through to the end so that he could meet Voldemort, but he did it in such a kind way. Yeah, like he know. saves, uh, like Malfoy's bullying him, and he turns Malfoy into a weasel. It's like, well, that yeah. wouldn't have really stopped Harry from doing anything. You were just kind of yeah. helping him out from a bully. <laughs> he gave him like confidence and shit too, yeah. like little pep talks in the <laughs> locker room. Yeah, Christ, I want to go watch those movies again. I've been rewatching them the, this last week. I the, want to check uh, Amazon right now if they're on Prime. The first couple, though, the special effects have aged terribly. There's well, a, it's as, as expected. Wait, I'm not complaining that it takes away from the movie, but there's a scene in the first one where Harry's flying around on a boom on a broom and losing control. And uh, mm. when they show him flying on the broom and it cuts to the CGI, it looks like a fucking Xbox game, like an original yeah. Xbox game. Yeah. And then they do the cowboy switch where the CGI Harry goes off screen and the real one flies in. And it's so jarring, it pulls you out immediately. The yeah. troll scene from Chamber of Secrets didn't age well. That either, one too. Like oh Harry yeah, around. that one looks Wait, horrendous. wait, wait. Troll scene? That was in Philosopher's Stone. Not yeah, that was also in the first one. It was yeah. also oh, in the first one. It, it looks Sorry. like a fucking... Oh yeah, because obviously like Quirrell a, does the troll in the dungeon thing. My bad. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Fake fan. <laughs> I knew the <laughs> details of the moment that I fucked up. <laughs> I like them. I don't know. They're, I I'm see not, I love that. They're, I'm not, you, I'm not yeah. saying it's bad at all. I'm just saying the CGI and effects are not aged well. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually super that. happy with the direction J.K. Rowling's taking it because I I can't think of any movie besides the newest Predator that I've been able to constantly look back on and laugh at more than Fantastic <laughs> Beasts. It's yeah, truly same. stunning God what damn she's it, done. don't make me buy a ticket for this piece of <laughs> Do it! Uh, because buy, no, buy because it sounds now. funny right now. Like, I'm in the I'm in the zone. Like, we're doing the podcast. Oh, it's going to be super funny if I watch it this week and then next week I can rag on it too. I'm going to be part of the gang, the J.K. Rowling <laughs> hate squad. But then I'm going to be sitting there and it's going to be boring bad. <laughs> Like, oh, Jesus. No. Trust like me, it's not boring bad because every it's scene will have you questioning what the fuck is happening. And fuck not yeah. in a way where it's like silent or they're, the characters aren't explaining things. I mean, maybe not explaining. They're explaining things. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, that's why it's fun <laughs> is because there's not a dull moment throughout the whole thing. The prison break at the start was cool. There, there are cool scenes sprinkled in and out throughout the movie as well, at least visually. Mm. I mean, I believe that. I, and Grendel Bull, he looks cool. <laughs> Johnny Depp looks like a cool character, but if like half the scenes are, oh, I want to stop the Holocaust. No, you're evil. No, no, that's it's not, not until he's, the end. Dude, yeah. there's barely any conflict until the very end. Like, there's really the, the, not shit see, happening. That makes it sound terrible. What do you mean there's barely any conflict? So what's Trust like me, we're not. Movie? You just got to see it, man. It's not like... <laughs> it's not boring because everything that happens is confusing. And there are, while things are being written poorly, there are really cool visuals for some of it and like some cool chase scenes and stuff. So it's bad and it is cool to look at sometimes. It's a nice train wreck, Kaya. You remember when Andrew and I were talking about the Predator movie, which was about the aliens trying to capture autism to bring it to their planet? Yeah. That's, that, that movie's a masterpiece, by the way. I'm gonna weigh in. That movie is fucking amazing. Yeah. I have not seen it, but I'm oh, disappointed because I really like the nice guys, and I'm sad. No, that this next movie is terrible. no, man. Like the, the uh, Predator, it's, it's Predator, something special. Predator is you go in, and I don't know, I don't know what to expect. You can w- hype it up as an, a sci-fi action movie. I think they list it as a horror movie, which makes no sense no. to me. Or they yeah, market it not. as a horror movie. But the instant you start. There's a giant, loud, downright disruptive, abrupt noise of an engine flying across the screen, and it's a spaceship. (laughs) So already the movie's like slamming your attention into paying attention to it, and it just goes into the scene of this alien crash landing, and you have zero fucking idea what's going on, but it's already, even before the end credits, or the opening credits end, because it happens in the middle of one of the opening, like, 20th Century Fox presents or whoever owns it and it, it's it's just immediately this sound and noise of confusing bullshit and it just from start to finish is hilarious and if if uh 
Fantastic Beasts is anything like it, then it's a worthwhile movie. That's why I made the comparison, because it takes it takes the essence of that ridiculous story, Aliens That Want Our Autism, and it stretches it over the course of two hours. <laughs> and it has you wondering why. What were they thinking? It's oh, it's, are, it's pretty beautiful. Are What's you the run time to see of that Andrew? movie? Or at least, what would you guess, Charlie? I'd say probably about like two hours, 15 minutes, something like yeah, that. Exactly. I would wow, say two that's ten. a long fucking movie. Jesus. Gee, holy it, it, shit. It, it didn't... It didn't feel... I was just about to say, it doesn't feel that long because you get locked inside your own head thinking about things. (laughs) It's a nice time for quiet reflection of yourself. Oh, there's nothing quiet about it. It's just so so goddamn thought-provoking. Yeah, it's two hours and 13 minutes, apparently. Which is uh, average, I guess, these days. I, I don't know if this is a mistake from Google, but it's saying that the first one was also exactly two hours and 13 minutes. It's part I don't of J.K. Know Rowling's it's... master plan. Yeah. <laughs> They're all it two hours, 13. Dumbledore has to put in the code into the nuclear missile <laughs> consults, 213, and it launches the nukes at <laughs> And then on Twitter, she's like, you guys might notice something a little peculiar about yeah. the run times on these movies. <laughs> They're tweeting at her, how long did you keep in the runtime secret, J.K.? <laughs> 15 almost hundred years that is precisely 133 minutes which is an asian number believe it or not and <laughs> are you going Chinese to see calendar. this movie if andrew takes the pledge to see this turd so will i uh how long is it in theaters <laughs> it's for? two exactly. hours it's two hours of your life take your mom take your mom to see it andrew just take your mom to see it. It'll give you guys something to do, and it'll give you something. Yeah, to talk it'll, about. it'll have a nice. We'll have a nice conversation during the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, take your mom while she's here. Just go like tomorrow or something while she's still in town. Maybe we'll we'll see. Uh, do I, it. Well, I am, Maybe I am, doesn't do it. I'm talking about right now. Do you take the pledge or not? Fine, I will see this movie. God yes. damn it! Because <laughs> oh, you really wanted well, wait, him to say yes, Kai. Don't put on this. Don't put on no, this tough I, guy I would have been very relieved if he had said "fuck no." Can you go in blind That's and it. still appreciate it? Yes. Okay, then, because I don't want to bother with you've the first heard, one. You've heard enough about the context from us yeah. that I think you'll be fine. You, you'll be able to like see scenes and go, oh, that's what they were talking about. I just about. don't, I just don't know any of the characters or anything. But uh, for a second, I considered I. No, trying yeah, to it's... do like a quick recap of the first one to tell you mm-hmm. what you would need for the second one. But genuinely, I can't think of a solid piece of information you need going into it, other than like the main character holds a suitcase and there are animals in it. All right, and we, that's you, all you, you have with that. He's a zoologist. With, He's a zoologist. With that, you have yeah. literally <laughs> sold me on watching it with no context. I'm in. He's a crappy <laughs> doctor. Who rip off and Dumbledore is young? Oh, but, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in. I'm in. Because I also and Dumbledore haven't, doesn't do anything. Either. I also That's haven't seen point. Harry Potter. I've only seen the first one. So what? I, yeah. Whoa, what? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I don't a, give a fuck about Harry Potter. I never mentioned this. I don't care. Dude, about it. you need to watch it. It's great. They're, they're, I, they're, that's, that sounds like not light. Not watching it just because you wanted to go against the grain. Not, it's it's not a good even, franchise. Not even close. I just never sat down and watched. How do you it? avoid it? It's not like all of us saw it because we're gigantic fans. It's just part of our childhood. You end up yeah, somehow. Yeah. Seeing when it. I was a How kid, you... the first Harry Potter book came out. I read it. I said, "This is boring," and I never got into it since. Oh well, you read what the a book. Fuck? I read the Listen to this yeah. Guy. I read the first. Hey, the, book. the books. The book's great. First of all, I didn't all. like For it nerds, as a kid. We watched the movies. Yeah, the cool kids. So then, since I didn't care about it as a kid, and I don't have nostalgia on it, I just never once went. You know, I should watch Harry Potter. Watch I, it. Watch I, it. I, I only I watched like the. It. I only watched watch the first it. one because a group of friends were watching it, and I was like, okay, sure. And we watched it. That was it. I, I, I'm not saying Harry Potter's bad. I actually think it's pretty good from what I've seen in the lore building you and hipster. all the plot points, but. Like I just, I've just never cover seen his it. Ass. The J.K. Rowling army's coming after you now, Andrew. But now that I, do, I think I, I'll have the best time then if I don't understand any form of any of this and just watch you this. Should, you- I think what's going to happen is you're going to go to the movie with your mother. It's going to light like a, a <laughs> love for J.K. Rowling and her beautiful senile mind. Jesus. And you're going to go down the rabbit hole. You should okay. You should really watch the original franchise. It's cool. I really anyway, should. That's not, I've been yeah. meaning to. Yeah. Yeah. We've, well, we've been going like two hours now. I yeah, think we, we can start stop. to wrap up. <laughs> Let's end it on me saying that I have bought my ticket. Andrew. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo. Let's VIP also end it on... on, on uh, bringing out this piece of information i was correct before when i said it was my idea about the polyjuice charlie was wrong i i found oh, the shit. the receipts so charlie can you confirm i sent you the picture 
He sent me a photoshopped picture or something. There's like crayon <laughs> scribbled on it. All right. All right, anyway, well, I have Eddie, my tickets. I may or may not go. Eddie, plug your stuff. Well, yeah. first off, I want to say thank you guys for having me. This was so much fun, genuinely. This oh, was shut awesome. up and thank plug you. your stuff. Thank Eddie. you for coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, my YouTube channel is Eddie Burback. Uh, it's Eddie with a Y, and then also my podcast is the Gus and Eddie podcast. Just searching those will will do it, and it's my, everything's Eddie Burback on like Twitter, Instagram, stuff like that. Awesome, man! We really appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. Thank you yeah, for having super me. Super nice for chatting us. with you. Big fan. All right, thank you everyone at home for watching and listening to this podcast. If you want to help support us, we've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash the official podcast. There's reward tiers over there that let you get bonus content each each uh, month. I think it's two episodes a month. They're about an hour and a half long each. So it's it's a good amount of content. Head on over there. Check out the reward tiers. Uh, yeah. Thank you to everyone for watching. We're and we'll also, see you next. We're also on the internet, Jackson. If you want to spread our if you want to spread our influence on the world wide web and make us feel powerful and mighty, you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or any other podcast audio formats. There you go. That's it. I had, we had to make sure we said Thank that. Thank you. All right. All right bye, everyone. All right. Share, subscribe, comment below. Yeah. Like Andrew just said. And Goodbye. tweet, tweet, and fuck it. Bye. <laughs>